guys, what's up? It's Calista. This video is going to be a quick one, and it's going to be about something super important, which is around reinforcements. Now, I know that some of you guys have seen my um, tips for taking a rally video, where I interviewed um, basically Lord's Mobile uh, players uh, that are rally pros, and they basically gave you guys tips and tricks. This is somewhat along those lines, but it only will talk about reinforcements. And the reason that I wanted to do this is because there are so many people, both new players and seasoned, that are struggling with knowing exactly what to ask for when they're asking for reinforcements. And there's a few different reasons that you might need reinforcements. It's not always because you're taking a rally. You might be taking a rally. That's usually the number one reason. But there could be a case where you're fighting a wonder war and you're reinforcing the base and you're a smaller player and your guild has some bigger players. You might want to get reinforced in case you get hit. Uh, it could be you're, you want to hold prisoners, and again, you're in a guild where you have some bigger players that can sit unshielded without needing reinforcements. You could get reinforcements that way. Um, so there's a variety of different reasons that you would request um, reinforcements, but it's very important to make sure that you're asking for the right type and the right tier, and that's really what we're going to talk about today. Um, so the first thing that we should probably talk about is your tier. Now, um, to understand the tier, you just need to understand kind of like the basic way that the game works. Now, when you are being attacked, let's assume that your castle only has infantry, just to keep things simple. Um, the order of, and let's assume also that you have T1, T2, T3, and T4. Your T1 infantry, in this case, because you only have infantry, would get hit first. Um, and then your T2, and then your T3, and then your T4. It is not like your T4 is standing in front of your T1. It is literally in the order that they would be basically receiving the attack. So you want to make sure when you're requesting reinforcements that you're requesting the right tier. And I will tell you how to figure out the tier in a second. What I want to talk about right now is the troop type. Now, by type, I mean infantry versus ranged versus cavalry. To figure out what uh, type you should be requesting, you should go into your army lineup and figure out what phalanx you're sitting in. I'm going to use infantry phalanx. It's actually my favorite uh, phalanx for taking a rally uh, for a few reasons, and I'll explain those in a bit. Uh, but basically, if you're taking a look at the formation, you're going to request the reinforcements that are going to stand in the very front. So if instead of infantry, you know, you just really love your calves and you're putting your calves in the front and you're doing a cav phalanx, you would be requesting cav as your reinforcement. The purpose of reinforcements are to basically minimize the amount of damage being done to you. So don't feel bad. I know I did in the beginning. I felt horrible asking for reinforcements, right? But really the purpose of reinforcements is to minimize the damage being done to the person that is being reinforced and in order for that to happen effectively you need to make sure that the reinforcements you're requesting are going to be the troop type that is sitting in the very front of your lineup right so if you're running infantry phalanx you're going to ask for infantry if you're running cab you're going to ask for cab um, and you want to be really clear on that. The phalanx are usually better to be in um, when you're taking a rally. Um, and it's very easy to request that type of reinforcement, right? So in this particular case, um, let's take a player that is 85% T3 and just recently unlocked T4 and maybe has 10% T4. And they're running infantry phalanx they should be requesting t3 infantry right because you don't want to get a bunch of t4 infantry that's going to be standing behind your own t3 infantry the really awesome things about reinforcement guys and why you shouldn't feel bad requesting them is they're not going to die that's another thing that i've seen a lot and i have a couple of alts um that i've been maintaining just to keep my resources up just because it takes so many resources right to run some of these accounts um, and I'm in normal guilds, like smaller guilds, right? And I see a lot of like misconceptions out there, which is why I'm bringing this stuff up. And one of them was, oh, I hate reinforcement because all my reinforcements die. Now that should never happen. The people that are sending reinforcements should only send enough reinforcements that their hospitals are capable of healing. So for example, let's assume that my hospital can heal 100,000 troops and my guild mate is being rallied and they're requesting reinforcements. And I send 100,000 troops and we get wrecked. Like literally everybody, it, it wipes through the reinforcement completely. Now, I'm not going to get any deaths. 
because all 100,000 reinforcements that I sent would be covered by my hospitals. Now, what if I go ahead and send 300,000 reinforcements, but my hospital capacity is only 100,000? Then I would be looking at 200,000 deaths. So it's really important if you're reinforcing to make sure that you're sending the right amount that your hospitals can cover. Don't send more than what your hospitals can cover, and then it becomes a really smart thing to do, right? Because you're basically helping your guildmate not to get deaths. It's very hard when you're taking a rally to have enough hospital capacity to be able to take the rally completely without reinforcements, right? But if you have your million reinforcements, assume you have a maxed embassy, standing in the very front, helping you take that initial damage, and all the hospitals, of all the people that are reinforcing you are the things that are getting filled as opposed to your own as the person who's taking the rally, that's what you want to happen, okay? So two things that we just talked about. We talked about making sure that you're asking for the right troop tier. Don't automatically just say, I'm going to ask for a bunch of T4. You want to ask for basically the type of troop that is going to stand in the very front, right? And that's your troop type. And then out of your troop type, you want to make sure you're picking your right troop tier. So for me, and I have about, I'm trying to figure out what like my breakout would be. I have... Um, some T3 and some T4. I have some T1 range because I do like to run infantry phalanx and my range is sitting in the back, so they're never gonna get hit. I mean, I would have to be on the verge of getting zero, knock on wood, that does not happen. Uh, but basically that's why I like infantry phalanx so much is because if somebody sends me a counter, I have millions upon millions of archers just shooting and, and dealing damage, right, to their front line while my infantry is kind of holding um, my front line. So again, I hope this is clear. If you have questions, feel free to ask. You guys should never be requesting mixed. That's my goal in making this video is for literally none of my viewers to go and request mixed reinforcements. They're gonna know exactly what they need. They're going to shot call it if they're online. And if they're not, a little tip before I let you guys go is, I know everybody likes to use their guild nicknames for cute things, like they'll put like spades or hearts, and I totally used to do that, right? It was like heart, Cali heart, and I thought it looked really cute. Now, the guild nickname is actually a really cool thing that is in-game, you don't need to go anywhere else, where you can let your guildmates know what type of reinforcement you need if you're offline, and it happens all the time. So you can see what my guild nickname looks like. It is hella not cute. It basically says T3 Infantry Reinforce. You could write it however you want. It has to be in shorthand, right? Because you only have so much room. But let's assume that I am offline. I am being rallied. I'm in war gear. My guild knows that it would probably be a good idea to reinforce me, right? Because I'll probably be able to eat the rally. Um, and they don't know what feelings I'm running. And they don't know any of the details of the inside of my castle, really. So they wouldn't know what to reinforce me with. And I've been in this situation a lot where we have no idea what to reinforce a person we cannot contact them in any way they are off the game what do we send so what we're going to send is mixed and that sucks you know you're not going to do well that first rally because what we should be doing is reinforcing your front line if you use your guild nickname to let your guild mates know what you need you basically take the guesswork out it will make it easier for you it'll make it easier for everybody right um you're not going to suffer that many losses if you happen to be off game people know immediately what they should be reinforcing you with and they're not going to fill you with nonsense like if you're running a cav formation they're not going to send you like a million ranged you know what i'm saying so try to use your guild nickname for this especially for some of the up-and-coming guilds in some of the newer kingdoms this is a good practice to have and instill in your folks um it's going to become a game where it's really about just being proactive and making sure that you're using those tools that are available to you we don't have a lot of tools within the game that let you communicate with your guildmates when you're not online, right? Other than sending a guild mail, which wouldn't make sense in this case. So you wanna make sure you're using your guild nickname effectively. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have questions, let me know. There's a couple of other things that I'm thinking about that I think might be interesting for you guys to learn. Like for example, a question I can see coming up is why do I like infantry and how am I set up to take rallies and what am I talking about having millions of archers standing in the back? Definitely in thinking I'm going to do a video just to describe that in a little bit more detail. But again, want to make sure everybody's walking away with a really, really clear understanding of what type of reinforcements they should be requesting. As usual, thank you so much for watching.